bloody engine is driving me crazy. But we just found out that our solar panels have arrived in the marina office. So we're going to head in to the welcome pontoon and pick them up. Can't wait to get this bloody engine off. Can't wait to get this bloody engine off. It's driving me nuts. Free solar energy. Oh yeah. Look at that bloody great big jellyfish. Wait. Wouldn't want to go swimming in there, would you? Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye. You too. Solar panels. Ah. Uh. Oh yes, yeah, solar panels. Ah. Uh. These are heavy. Oh, they're heavy. Uh. And they're on. Finally splashed out on some solar panels and the kit to hook it into our battery system. So I'm just going to talk you through the bits that we've got, how we intend to hook them all up and then on Friday we'll release another video which shows you how we went with the installation. So we got, we opted for sun power semi-flexible solar panels. Um, they are 12 by 4 cells uh, and they're installed on a sort of flexible polycarbonate sheet. Um, they're not the cheapest that you can get but we decided we'd go for these because they're very robust. Um, they have a five year limited warranty which means that they're guaranteed not to lose more than 20% of their efficiency over the course of five years. So we thought that that was um, a pretty good guarantee. They are hardened for a marine environment. We got them in this configuration. A lot of the sun power panels come in six by eight cell configurations, but because we're going to install them on our spray hood and bimini, we'll these fit perfectly and the company that we bought them from had to get them shipped over from America especially because they're not very popular here but they are with us. Here's the two connectors. We are going to be, in, we've got three of them and we're going to be installing them in parallel which means that we're going to connect up all the pluses and all the negatives before we run the two cables down into the battery bank. We've got two, two 10 meter cables, one positive, one negative. And then we've got two smaller one meter cables, which will allow us to connect the panels in parallel, even though they'll be slightly farther apart from each other. So hopefully that's going to be enough cable. Why have we decided parallel and not series? Okay, so the difference between parallel and series is that when you connect your solar panels in series, you increase the voltage but you keep the current the same. Um, when you connect them in parallel you keep the voltage the same but you increase the current. Um, and given that since we have a 12 volt system we don't want to keep increasing the voltage on the system which is already for each one of these the voltage is about 29 volts per panel uh, about 5.7 amps of current so if we connect ours in parallel, 
it means that we're going to end up with about 17 amps coming from the system, which is perfect. That should see our energy needs quite sufficiently covered. They are good looking, I must admit. I do like them. Um, they've got these little cleats for attaching to the to the bimini and the spray hood. Not quite figured out how we're going to do that yet. And there's a nice little system they've got here for connecting these things up. It's like a quick push. So you just basically take that and you shove that in there, kadunk, and it clips on nice and sturdy. Very straightforward, very easy. We've got, because we're joining them in parallel, we have two extra connectors. This allows us to join two together into one, and then we'll run that through these cables to the next panel where we have a second one, which will allow, allow us to like plumb the two together. So we join up all the positives, join up all the negatives. What can happen when a shadow falls on a solar panel is that it drastically reduces the power output of the panel. And if you connect your panels in series or in parallel, then that one shadow can affect the entire power output of the whole system. So we've got these extra little bits called diodes and you connect these between the positives of the solar panel and then if a shadow falls onto one of the solar panels it does not affect the power output of the other two. So you get a lot more power from the system with these diodes between them. And that's about it really. Um, once they're all hooked up together the positives and all the negatives, we run these two cables down to where the batteries are and in where the batteries are we now have this little device. We've got a smart solar charge controller. It's a Victron Energy one because we already have a Victron uh, battery monitor and we felt that if we had the same brand of equipment that uh, they would probably play a lot nicer together. It's Bluetooth enabled which means that all we need to do is hook up the batteries to here and the photovoltaics to here, plus and minus for each, and then we should be able to connect to this with our mobiles and see how much energy we're producing and monitor it over time and produce nice little graphs day by day and all that kind of stuff so we'll show you that. So yeah, pretty straightforward. So where are we going to put that? Where the, where's that going to go? This should, in order for the most efficient um, charging of the batteries, it should be within five degrees of the temperature of your batteries. So the obvious place to put it is in with the batteries. So that's what we'll do. Which are? We have two sets of batteries, one under the bed in each of the back bedroom, but I think we'll put the charge controller. Well, it depends which side of the boat we're going to bring the cables down, which I also haven't decided yet. So if we bring them down the port side of the boat, then obviously we'll put the charge controller in with the batteries on the port side. And if we bring the cables down the starboard side, we will put them in with the battery bank and the starboard cabin bed. This is a 100 stroke 50 charge controller, which is rated for the voltage and the ampage of the solar panels that we have. Um, you can get smaller ones and you can get larger ones, but this, this will be plenty for what we need. So we're gonna have one of the panels installed on the top of the spray hood here. Uh, as you can see, the boom throws quite a shadow. Well, the boom and the mass throw quite a shadow on that. So what we'll do is, to generate more electricity, we'll just pull the boom out when we're at anchor. Uh, there's not much we can do about it while we're sailing. But on the back here, on the bimini, we initially were going to put a panel across there and a panel across there. But looking at it now with the shadows, I think it might be better if we install them this way. So we'll have one here and one there. 
And then when we're sailing, the boom, the shadow of the boom won't, well, less likely to be covering the, uh, the solar panels. So we'll see. That's another decision yet to be made. So you say all our kit is not the cheapest out there. What are we talking? Each solar panel cost £375 and we got three of them. Our charge controller, the Victron charge controller, was £250. And then all the other bits and bobs, the diodes and the connectors, uh, brings and delivery to Portugal from England as well. And the box was huge. Was the total came to exactly nineteen hundred pounds? Oof, that's not free energy. <laughs> it's not free energy, no. <laughs> but if it means that we don't have to run the engine, ah, oh, it's worth every penny. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe. Help us make more videos like this by joining our Patreon family.